would be a misleading way to start this video, but I'm gonna go with it anyway, and at least I got your attention. The 2015 NHL entry draft has come and gone, and if you're a Leaf fan, we happy. And we will obviously focus on the Leafs because Leafs, but we will talk about the entire draft. So if you're a fan of another team, stick around. Nine is the number of players the Toronto Maple Leafs drafted. 24th overall is not where they drafted. The Leafs make a pair of deals to trade that pick down twice, which kind of made me nervous at first and would have made me nervous in previous years, but I'll tell you why I'm calm. There was something, I, I don't know if this is the right word, but deliberate about it. Because there were so many big names left the Leafs could have got with the 24th or the 29th pick if they kept them. Konechny, Wah, maybe maybe even Shillington. Killington. Shouldn't it be Killington? I feel like it should. That'd be cool. And they're very highly touted and a lot of people were very excited about those players, but the Leafs just kind of seemed to go, no, no, it's okay, we're going to keep going. And the Leafs did not acquire another first round pick for a guy like, oh, I don't know, Phil Kessel. So let's just focus on who they got and we'll get to those non-trades later. And if you've been listening to the podcast lately, I'm going to talk about something that you'll find familiar, PCS percentage. So the fine folks at the Nation Network, they run a little website called the leafsnation.com for example they developed this algorithm this this big thing this database that goes through all the players that have ever been drafted and they take this year's draft class and compare them to those players and in doing that you find players from the past and you can relate them to this year's crop so you can predict how good they're going to be from the leafsnation.com pcs percentage uses age height production and league to award players a percent chance of reaching 200 nhl games played it's obviously not perfect it's not a crystal ball it can't predict the future but if you look at who the leafs pick and who they're compared to. <laughs> First for the Leafs, Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner, how about Mitch Starner? Am I high five? Please keep watching. He's kind of undersized. He's also kind of an amazing player. He was tearing it up for the London Knights, and this is the guy I wanted the Leafs to pick. Provorov would have been interesting. There's something weird about Noah Hannafin that I, that I question. So Marner, and it became more and more apparent that the Coyotes were going to keep their pick and get Strom. So I made peace with Marner. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know my dog Iggy predicted Marner. All signs point to Martin. So the LeafsNation.com noted two comparables for Mitch Martin. One was a little guy named uh, uh, Kyle Wellwood. So that, uh, that's concerning. The other was this guy, I don't know, he's just a footnote in NHL history, Steve Eiserman! Would you take Steve Eiserman on the Leafs? I'd take the actual Steve Eiserman on the current Leafs. So let me know what you think of the Leafs' decision to draft Mitch Martin because that's the big one. Next, second round, they finally pick. 24th, 29th, ah, oh, okay, fine, we'll settle here. Travis Dermott. Now you may look at him and look at the fact that he played on the Erie Otters and he played with Connor McDavid and he played with Dylan Strom, he played with all these talented players. Oh, maybe that boosted his numbers. And you know what? Sometimes you can dock guys marks for that. Maybe they were propped up. I do that sometimes. But also consider the fact that Dermott was playing with Connor McDavid and sending passes to Connor McDavid and Dylan Strom. Now, do you want a guy who has spent his time in the OHL feeding passes up ice to Dylan Strom and Connor McDavid or someone who has been feeding passes to someone who may never play pro? I don't think there's anything wrong with knowing how to play with a player of a certain caliber. Sure, some stars can make their teammates look amazing but if you look around the NHL, not always true. Dermot's comparables, by the way, Andre Benoit, Tim Gleason, Kevin Klein, Cam Fowler, and Drew Doughty. Now, okay, Drew Doughty might be a little pie in the sky, but would you take Cam Fowler for a second round pick? I think I would like that. Now, this guy's weird, Jeremy Bracco, and I just want it to be pronounced Bracho so I can call him Bracho Libre. Here's another guy, kind of small, kind of dominating the USHL, putting up crazy points, and you might go, oh, USHL, boo. It's nothing to scoff at, my friends. His PCS percentage comparables are Andy Hilbert and Chad LaRose. Now those names aren't very exciting, but some people are more optimistic, and since I'm a hopeless Leafs fan, I'll do the same. Speeding it up a bit, the Leafs draft a big guy for a change, Andrew Nielsen. One of his comparables was Luke Shen, which again, fifth overall, yeah, that kind of hurts. In a mid to later round, yeah, I'll take that. And it's funny, there's this weird trend now of disliking players because they're big. Like for a while, it's been shifting from, oh, we need this big tough player to, oh, okay, well how about this little skill guy, but creeping into the psyche of a lot of hockey fans seems to be the sentiment of, oh, he's big, he must suck. Which, why wouldn't you want a good player who is also big? Ovechkin, what a bum. We kind of saw that happen with Lawson Krause. Meanwhile, he could be the next Ryan Johansson, Ryan Getzlaff, Rick Nash, who knows? Next up, rejoice Latvian Leafs fans, because the Leafs drafted a Latvian. A Leaf 
to VM. March of the Circles. March of the Circles is how I'm gonna pronounce it until I know how to actually pronounce it. Kinda sounds like Martin's Turtles, which also sounds like it could be the title of a Dr. Seuss book. Dr. Seuss had a five letter last name and three of those letters were S's. You're telling me he's not popular in Latvia? One fishes, two fishes, anyway. It's difficult to find comparisons for him. But based on his name and nationality alone, I hope he makes it. I'm like the opposite of Don Cherry. Don Cherry. Ah, oh, we got this good old Latvian kid. He's got a bunch of S's in his name. You know who else had a bunch of S's in their name? One of the best defensemen of all time, Bobby R. Don, he, okay, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Speed round, Jesper Lindgren. His comparables are Eric Carlson and Dennis Person. Who? Dmitry Chimachov. Timachov? Oh boy. A current NHL comparison would be David DeHarnay. I'll take him with a late round pick, yeah. Steven Derocher of the Memorial Cup winning Oshawa Generals. Ha ha ha. His comparables are Jake Muzzin and former Leaf great Phil Oreskovic. Remember him? Remember he's coming back. There you go, you remember him. You're welcome for those clicks you just got, Hockey DB. And extremely interesting with their final pick, the Leafs draft Nikita Korostelev. Yet another name I look forward to butchering for years to come. If we're lucky. So some of his comparables are Adam Henrique, Cody Hodgson, Ryan O'Reilly, and Leaf Peter Holland. 53 points in 55 games with the Sarnia Sting this past season, just 18 penalty minutes. You want to tell me how this guy almost didn't get drafted? Drafted 185th overall, and I just checked the most amount of games that someone drafted 185th has ever played is 115, so that's not good. Can this guy buck the trend? Listen, after all these years of the Leafs sucking, after all these years of the Leafs not winning the cup, not even win, how about making the playoffs? Where is our Datsuk or Zetterberg? Damn it, we're due! I'm freaking get- I'm getting a Nikita's Coral Stalev, Stalev, whatever, I'm staging- I'm gonna get a, a him Leaf jersey stitched now! Money meets bank. Last Leafs move of the day, they acquired Martin Marinson for- how did they get Martin Marinson? Now, a lot of opinions about this trade, I'll explain it real quick. I think the Leafs and the Oilers did well. So, Martin Marinson, who do the Leafs get? The Leafs get a guy who basically had trouble cracking the Edmonton Oilers defense core, which is pretty shocking, but he's also an analytical darling. Not amazing, but solid. And to me, with Marinson, I don't know if it was so much about skill, but it, it seemed like there was, there was like a personal thing. I don't think he was loving it in Edmonton, and can you blame him? He's probably not the only one. To get him, the Leafs give up the fourth round pick that the Leafs Leafs acquired in the Daniel Winnick trade. Keep in mind, they also got a second round pick in that trade. And the Leafs also give up Brad Ross, who they had already given up. He was going to Europe. Former second round pick, yes, but the guy can barely crack the Marlies. And you might say, oh, the, the Oilers just gave him away. Well, they also got Eric Griba from the Sens for relatively cheap. So you basically replaced Marinson with Griba, and the Oilers didn't really seem to like Marinson all that much, and now they get Griba, who can definitely play in the NHL for them. So maybe you don't get crazy value from Marinson, but you also don't give up a whole lot to to get his replacement either. And at the end of the day, the Leafs get a young defender who can maybe be a part of their rebuild. Loves it. Last Leaf point, uh, trades? Now I can tell the Leafs drafted well because I didn't talk to a whole lot of Leaf fans that seemed all that upset that Kessel's still a Leaf or Phaneuf is still a Leaf, Bozak, Lupul, etc. A name that's not getting brought up a whole lot, Roman Polak. As Brendan Shanahan said, the Leafs have started talks. And the draft is not the trade deadline. I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to see trades, but more for entertainment, to be honest. And luckily, the Leafs aren't running their team with the same mindset. Listen, the way I look at it, if you want to unload a guy like Phil Kessel or Tyler Bozak at the NHL entry draft, you should be getting a combination of first round and second round picks at least. And if those deals aren't there, you can't get them done, then don't do them. Lupul, Kessel, Bozak, Phaneuf, those are all guys who are on the Leafs with term. The Leafs are in the middle of a rebuild, yes, but there's no fire. You don't get max value going, yeah, I take this. You may get max value waiting a few days for free agency to kick off, watch that free agency market dry up, and whoever came up empty, you go, may I interest you in a slightly used Joffrey Lupul. Yes, I would like to take a crappy call contract off your team, may I also have a prospect. Here's an optimistic way to look at it. The Leafs are a far stronger organization after the draft weekend than they were before it. And they still have Kessel, Bozak, Lupul, Phaneuf, all those names I keep saying over and over again. You could trade them or keep them. And I had a moment when I was getting a little out of hand, like, oh, the Leafs could trade Kessel and Bozak and Lupul and Phaneuf and wait a second. They need to ice an NHL team on account of they're an NHL team. You trade all those guys depending on the package that you get. Here's what you're faced with. Loading the Leafs up with just young guys next season and having them be terrible and unwatchable and potentially ruin those players. Or have the Leafs sign a bunch of bums and keep the young guys down and then we spend all of next season yelling about, Bring Neil 
Highlander up and I don't I don't have the strength. The Leafs are finally preaching and practicing patience. That is something to be happy about. Now moving on to other teams. What the hell are the Bruins doing? Watching what the Bruins did at this draft was like watching someone try to back into a parking spot for the first time. Turn the wheel. Turn the Okay, you're getting no. No, no, the other way. The other way. Pull back out. Pull back out. Okay, now come in. Signal. Use your sig- No, pull back out. Pull back- Okay, use your wheel. Use your wheel. The wheel. Roll down your window. Roll down your- I'm gonna- Can I come in the driver's seat? Can I- Okay, no, no, no. I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. Come back. No, it's okay. No, it's not really better than last time. What are you doing? Now that's all funny and stuff. I got to admit, I think people are exaggerating a bit. I don't think the Bruins are terrible now. They're down Dougie Hamilton. That stings. They're down Milan Lucic, and he's a guy I just associate with the Bruins forever. But you still have Tuukka Rask in net, and your top two centers are David Krejci and Patrice Bergeron. Wah. In my opinion, the Bruins are way worse than they were before the weekend started. But there's still a potential playoff. Team. Although reviews of those three consecutive first round picks were uh, mixed. Here's a question, Flames fans. How are you feeling? The Flames defense core is disgusting. Off the top of my head, I'm not even going to look at anything. Dougie Hamilton, Mark Giordano, TJ Brody, Chris Russell, Dennis Wideman, and it doesn't matter who else. Like, just listening to that, the Flames could easily trade Wideman for someone else, and they could free up, like, five million bucks, potentially. Get a young forward to play with Michael Backlund and Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan, and oh wait, they don't really need one. So how good are the Calgary Flames going to be next season? Because that's an interesting acquisition. Last but not least, I gotta give props to Garth Snow. He always makes the draft interesting. Trading Griffin Griffin Reinhardt, someone who a lot of people are calling a maybe to the Edmonton Oilers, so you can get a pick to draft Barzal, who sounds like a Power Rangers bad guy. Zordon, we need your help to defeat Barzal! When I shave my face, I only use Barzal. Names entertain me, have we, have we gotten that yet? Have we got, okay. And speaking of the Islanders, oh well, little chestnut of, they drafted Endong Song, the first ever Chinese-born player to be drafted into the NHL. That is a huge deal, and if he were to make the NHL, it would be a huge deal, but also amazing, there are Chinese Chinese media, they're covering that. I can't put enough emphasis on how important that would be for not just the NHL, but hockey as a sport. And maybe, just maybe, one day, not long from now, you'll see someone walking around with a New York Islanders shirt, and they will have his name on the back. What? What's wrong with Mike Grabowski? All right, fine, I'll change. Jeez, holy smokes, can't believe you guys. So anyway, let me know what you thought of the NHL entry draft. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, and barring something amazing happen, the next time I'll talk to you, free agency. See, it's harder to screw up names there because I know them already.